Hey there, let's learn how to Twixter in a jog style on Premiere Pro. First of all, make sure that your main sequence is at 15 frames per second. It's perfect for jog style edits. So that's going to be the frame rate for my main sequence. However, your nested sequence, and I'll explain that in a second, should be in 24 frames per second if you're editing anime. So because my main sequence is at 15, I'm going to right click my clip and select nest, click OK, and we're going to open it up. Then head to sequence at the top and change the sequence settings frame rate from 15 to 24 and click OK. Now what we can do is remove the dead frames. Dead frames are duplicate frames so we want to make a cut every time there is movement so I'm just going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move forward so the character has not moved but if I head one more frame you can see she has moved so I'm going to make a cut and repeat so one two cut one two cut one two cut and repeat. Now that's done, you want to highlight all of them, right click, head over to speed slash duration and turn the duration just down to a single frame, which is this one here and click OK. Now, for some reason, you might see a random frame. This is because um, my time base is at 24, not 23.976. So if you just change it to that, that will fix the issue. Then you want to head over to sequence at the top and select close a gap and that's going to remove all of the gaps on your timeline. So now each frame is moving. Next what we're going to do is head over to the product tab, right click adjustment layer and click OK then place it next to your clips and extend it to as long as possible. I'm just going to go a few seconds, maybe three or four. We can always extend it or cut it down if necessary, but I'm just going to head back into my main sequence. So I'm going to close this nested sequence. Now it's time to Twixter. So head over to the effects tab and drag on Twixter Pro to your clip. Head to effect controls. And what we're going to be doing is using not the speed option, but the frame number. So select that option and you want to keyframe the frame number at the start head towards the end. In fact, follow what I do. So I'm going to move my playhead to the final frame. So not to the very end where you can't see anything, to the very last frame. And then move about one, two frames back. Increase the frame number. So I'm just going to click that and use the up arrow key to just increase the frame number until it goes black. So seven is when it goes black, meaning I need to go one frame back. So six is perfect. I'm going to open up the graph. So just click on this arrow next to the stopwatch and we're going to graph it. So just click on the last keyframe, grab this handle here and pull it to the left like so. Make sure it's leveled. So not too high or too low, just like that. So it should look like a very smooth graph. Then I'm going to head to the end. So this is what I was talking about earlier and we're going to change this to a lower value. So let's go something for something like maybe two just to play around with what you think looks best. I think two would be okay. And then I'm going to graph it towards the right. So I'm just going to grab this handle for my second keyframe, pull it to the right, make sure it's not too high or too low, as always on level and let go. So it should look like this. So now if I play it back, you can see it looks pretty good and it does reverse at the end. Now it does feel a little bit slow at the start and I think we could improve that. So I'm just going to move my first keyframe ahead and grab this handle and pull it up like so, maybe something like this. If you pull it too high, it's going to dip and it's going to look really weird. It might even go black. So make sure the curve is still smooth. So I'm just going to push it down a bit closer, maybe something like this. And this looks pretty good as you can see. So if I do push it back, it might actually break it. Might need to adjust the handle a little bit more. So I'm just going to pull it down just a tiny bit and then push it back. Perfect. Now, as for the settings, because as you can see, it's very distorted. We're going to first of all scroll up and change the image prep to contrast slash edge enhance. So just click that. If it looks pretty bad, so for me, it looks terrible. Go for delinearize and that kind of soften out the warp. So before and after. But also what we want to do is change the which one was it? I think it was the warping. So go for forward. Again, if that doesn't look right, then go for inverse with smart blend. And there you go. This is the final result. I'm going to finish it off by right clicking, nesting it and adding on some effects. So first of all, I'm going to add an adjustment layer on top. I will be making some tutorials soon, but I'm going to be using my jug glitch editing pack. So I'm going to start by adding a shake. I'm going to go manual bounce. That looks pretty good. I don't really like the rotation, so I could change it, but let's just go bounce to see how that looks. Okay, that's actually better. How about manual fast? Let's see. 
Okay, I actually like that one. It's very snappy. I'm actually going to go for manual hard because it looks really good. And here's the result. You can see the Twixter makes a huge difference. My jug editing pack includes over 50 presets from shakes to transitions to one framers and more. The link is in the description below. Thank you to my monthly supporters as always and I will see you in the next video. Peace.